So hi, my name is Lynn Kish and I'm a librarian at Norris Medical Library and today I want to talk to you about systematic reviews, which are kind of my favorite thing ever. So I'll try to, I'll try to keep the enthusiasm down. I bet you think I'm joking, but I'm not. Okay, so this again should look familiar to you, the evidence pyramid of the publication types. Start from the bottom, that's where the primary studies are, and at the top is the synthesis of the research. And that's what we'll be talking about today, systematic reviews and meta-analyses. So let's go over what we want to do today. I want to help you distinguish a systematic review from a standard literature review. I think that's sometimes the best way to understand the glory and power that is a systematic review. And I want to show you how to locate all reviews and systematic reviews and meta-analyses in PubMed. Spoiler alert, we're going to use the article type filters. And lastly, I want to introduce you to my good friend, the Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews. So let's get started. So at some point you've read a literature review. So these are helpful tools that give us a snapshot of what the current literature says on a given topic. And we really like these when we're doing research because it allows us to read just one article instead of a whole bunch of articles. Um, we know that medical information is growing exponentially, so it's a really useful tool. We're always going to have these standard literature review articles. Um, but they rely very much so on human nature. And that's what systematic reviews try to counteract, is to try to eliminate bias on the individual who's presenting you a review of the literature. So let's look at this. Let's start with definitions. So a literature review is a qualitative summary of evidence on a topic using informal or subjective methods to collect or interpret studies. So this is something that we've all done. We've run a search in PubMed, we see a bunch of articles, and we kind of go through and say, this one looks good. Oh, I know this author, so it's going to be good. And you just kind of, again, that's informal and subjective. Whereas a systematic review is a high-level overview of primary research that identifies, selects, synthesizes, and appraises all relevant high-quality research evidence. So there's no longer that game of what looks good to me. Systematic reviews set out at the very beginning to get all the literature on a given topic. What's the goal of these two different articles? So a literature review is again just to provide a summary or overview of a topic. Whereas a systematic review is trying to answer a focused clinical question that can be used to treat patients. And lastly, eliminate the bias of human nature. I know, that's what I want to do. Ugh, someday. So the question that you use at the beginning. With a literature review, it doesn't have to be that specific. It can be a general topic or a specific question. So it could be as general as type 2 diabetes treatment among teenagers. Whereas a systematic review needs to be a clearly defined and answerable clinical question. And we really encourage people to use PICO, remember that, as a guideline. So it's not just about a patient or a problem, but you're also going to consider the intervention you want to use, a comparison to that intervention if there is one, and the outcome you're trying to achieve. So the components of a literature review, a standard literature review, look really familiar to any published article. You're going to have an intro, a methods, discussion, conclusion, and include a reference list. Whereas a systematic review is going to have a pre-specified eligibility criteria. Before the search was cre even created, the people who put together the systematic review tell you what, why something's going to be included and why it's not. That systematic search strategy is also going to be included. They're going to tell you, I used PubMed and I put in these terms and this is what it looked like. They're also going to assess the validity of the findings so that when they go through and use their pre-specified eligibility criteria and they'll provide you ideally with a flow chart when things were excluded, when things were included. So you really will go from thousands of articles now to just a dozen and they'll tell you why those dozens were included. And lastly, there's going to be an interpretation and presentation of the results, sometimes using statistical methods and sometimes not. And lastly, of course, they will include a reference list as well. So you can see just that what's included and what's not included, how the level of evidence is going to vary between these two studies. So let's talk about the authors. In a literature review, how many you need? You really just need one person, but of course they can ask others for help. And the skills that they bring really is an understanding of the topic, and they're going to perform searches in one or more databases. In a systematic review, on the other hand, you have to have three or more people involved. The number three is important because when you go through the eligibility criteria, typically you have two people independently go through all your articles and decide what's included and not included. They'll then compare that process, the results, and if there's any contention or difference between those two, the third person can arbitrate. 
So that's why you need definitely three people. You also like to have three people because you have to, again, go through thousands of articles and one person ugh, would not like doing that on their own. So the skills you need for a systematic review is not just an understanding of a topic, but a thorough knowledge of the topic. You also need to perform the search not just in one or two databases, but in all relevant databases. And lastly, if you plan to do a statistical analysis, such as a meta-analysis, you will need some of those resources and skills as well. How long does this take? This is a question I get a lot. For a literature review, again, these are very significantly, but it can take a couple weeks, it can take a couple of months. A systematic review, think of it more of months to years. It's very common to see articles pulled in 2010, but the systematic review not be published until a later year, such as 2012. An average for this is 18 months. So again, it's a big time commitment to complete a systematic review. And lastly, what's the value of these literature types? Because we wouldn't have them if they weren't helpful in different ways. So literature review, they provide that summary of the literature on a topic. Whereas a systematic review connects practicing clinicians to high quality, succinct evidence and supports evidence-based medicine. You can use a systematic review to treat a patient. So now let's pull up PubMed and I wanna show you how to find review articles using the article type filter. All right, so you'll access PubMed through the Norris Medical Library homepage and you can access it quickly through our quick links. Yeah, that's a good name for it, isn't it? And click PubMed at USC. So instead of just searching PubMed, let's do a mesh search and look up hormone therapy. All right, so this first one, hormone replacement therapy, looks great. Let's give it a click. I think it's always good to look at the mesh entry just to see that hierarchy. Again, do I wanna go more specific and talk about estrogen replacement therapy? No, I think I wanna keep it more general and do hormone replacement therapy. Once I think it's what I want, I'm gonna add it to my search builder. So now let's look up heart disease. Ooh, heart diseases, exactly what I want. Let's give it a click. Look at all those subheadings. It's magical, it's mesmerizing. And then let's look at this hierarchy. Do I wanna go more specific? I don't think so, but oh, maybe I want cardiovascular disease. Yeah, I do, because I wanted to talk about blood vessels so let's do a subheading. We're just talking about preventing and controlling. I'm gonna add that to my search and let's search PubMed. If I click review, I get 987 articles. And this is now all review articles. This is gonna include all literature reviews, systematic reviews and systematic reviews with meta-analysis. If I click more, and I go through this list, I'll see I have more options. Meta-analysis is a filter, and a systematic review is a filter. So let's remove the review. Now I just want systematic reviews. Now I have 173 to go through. But if I just want something with meta-analysis, I can do that. I can click meta-analysis, and now I have 21. So that's kind of the quickest way to hedge down your search in PubMed to include just these different review article types. Now, I do want to talk a little bit more about a meta-analysis. A lot of people like to say meta-analysis and systematic review like they're the same thing, but they're not. So I think this little diagram will help understand these differences. So if this circle is all the review articles, it's going to be all those standard literature reviews as well as systematic reviews. Then this box, not box, it's a circle, is all the systematic reviews. And within those systematic reviews, some of them have a meta-analysis. So you can have a systematic review with or without a meta-analysis. And I think that's the best way to think about it. Now I wanna to talk to you about the Cochrane Library. The Cochrane Library really has become the gold standard for systematic reviews. And it's because they're high quality and very transparent systematic review. They have their entire handbook available online to anyone to go through the process of what they do to create a systematic review. The Cochrane Library is more than just systematic reviews though. It also includes trials and reviews of effects. And what reviews of effects means is that they have people who read articles and then assess them for you. So let me show you how to use the Cochrane Library. And you'll find Cochrane listed on your uh, student lab guide. So students, medicine, year two. So 
So here it is, Journal Article Databases, Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews. Okay, so there is a more advanced search. You can use Mesh on Cochrane, but from my experience using it, it's such a smaller database than something like PubMed that it's just fine usually to use the basic search. So again, let's do hormone replacement therapy, heart disease. Okay, so you see over here on the left, it's saying I got 208 results, but you really didn't get that in just systematic reviews. That's including things from their trials database and all their other sources as well. But here it's showing me that we have six different reviews on hormone replacement therapy. And like I said, you can see how these are different from other review articles because they're such focused questions. It's not just hormone therapy in all women, but in postmenopausal women specifically, or women with type 1 diabetes. This first one, though, tells me that it was published in April 2013. And it looks like it addresses that basic question that I have. So when you click on it, you'll go through here, and you have many different options, which I really like. You can look at the full article in HTML. You can look at a summary a standard or full version in PDF. And if you're in a hurry, because when are we not, you can actually scroll down. It gives you, again, all the steps they went through. But they also, at the bottom, have a plain language summary, which gives you the answer to that question. Is hormone replacement therapy effective in preventing cardiovascular disease in postmenopausal women? And it actually gives you not a definite answer, which is pretty common in systematic reviews, because that's how it works in medicine in general. It's going to help some women, but not all women. It's going to help someone with one thing, but maybe cause pain in another way. So that's a really great resource, is the Cochrane Systematic Reviews. Now, it's good to know that Cochrane Systematic Reviews are included in PubMed, but sometimes it's helpful just to search Cochrane if you're looking for a good gold standard systematic review without having to go through PubMed. So here's all the stuff we did today. Remember when we distinguish a systematic review from a standard literature review, I showed you how to locate all of the following articles in PubMed, and hopefully I introduced you to Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews. So again, thank you for your time, and I look forward to talking to you in the future about guidelines.